everybody it's your girl Brittany coming back at you with another video before we get into this i'm gonna need y'all to hit that like button and subscribe with post notifications on so you can keep up with all the latest trending news and gossip going on in these social media streets while the world was distracted by the release of the Jeffrey Dahmer series on Netflix, a city in Missouri was experiencing their own psychopath. On September 22, 2022, a bishop named Tony Caldwell from Kansas City, Missouri, went live on Facebook warning residents that a community activist informed him there was a serial killer on the loose. Four young ladies had been found dead on 85th and Prospect, and three more were reported missing earlier that week. I am a little upset right now. The reason I'm upset is because we got four young ladies that have been murdered within the last week uh, here off of 85th and Prospect. We got a serial killer again, and ain't nobody saying nothing. The media's not covering it. We got three young ladies that are missing. Ain't nobody saying a word. What is the problem? Why? Why can't we get some cooperation? Where's our community leaders? Where's our activists? Where's our public officials? Where's our police department? Where is those folks at? In President Gardens. Come on now. We, we need to start knocking doors. We need to start making sure that this is uh, brought to the light. We cannot continue to let this happen. We're headed out to President Gardens right now, start knocking some doors, passing out flyers, asking questions. Because guess what? If nobody else will, we will. These are our babies. These are our young ladies. These are our mothers, our daughters, our kids. Come on now, our nieces. Where is your outrage? Why is it nobody's talking about it? Why is it being swept underneath the rug? Why? Because they're not perfect kids? Nobody's perfect. Why? Because they're trouble, they're, they got trouble in their parents? That don't matter. Where's our outrage? Let's do it. Let's get together. Let's make sure that our kids are come home. But we got a serial kid and nobody's saying a word. It's time to act. We're going to go knock some doors. As Bishop Tony's video began to spread, many residents in the community were struck with anger due to the lack of media coverage and police involvement. Four days after Bishop Tony posted his video, a Kansas City police officer named Donna Drake released a statement saying the claim of a serial killer on the loose was just a rumor with no factual basis. The statement reads, We are aware of the social media posts circulating regarding the murder of four women in Kansas City, Missouri in the past week at the hands of a serial and the report of three additional women missing. We want to make the public aware this claim is completely unfounded. There is no basis to support this rumor. Furthermore, we notify the media anytime we respond to a homicide. There is a daily homicide analysis which is also posted on our website. There has been one female homicide victim in the last six weeks which occurred in the 3600th block of Cypress Avenue. A family who's been searching for their missing relative, 15-year-old Jayana Brown, since September 9th dismissed the claims of a serial killer as well and asked the community to stop spreading that information. From door to door. In Hickman Hills and Ruskin neighborhood streets. The Brown family is asking for help. September 9th, about 6.30 or 7, uh, my niece went missing. Passing around 17-year-old Jayana's picture. Yeah, it's been 17 days now, so I'm, I'm just trying to see if anybody may have seen anything not always coming away with answers <sighs> lavera brown says her daughter walked away and didn't come back police say she's still missing i wish she could find her way back home and whatever is going on we can find a solution for it no problems too heavy something um, it's just not right. The Browns wanting answers, especially after the negative impact of a viral video with false claims of a serial We got a serial killer again, and ain't nobody saying nothing. Police say that's completely unfounded. The video by the Kansas City Defender has since been deleted. Some commenters connected Jayana's disappearance to it. When you heard about those really awful rumors last yeah. night, yeah. 
that probably made your family worried. Yeah, it, it definitely affected the, the way I know my kids were feeling. It's not true, and so please don't call us and send links with those kind of informations. We already can think the worst on our own. All we would ask if your prayers are needed, and if not, you know, just not send us the links. It's not helpful at all. We are understand the outcome of negativity in society, so we don't need to have anybody embark that on us with uh, titles or web links or anything like that. The Browns now hoping to turn the harm into fuel for hope. Nobody's gonna know if we don't say something. Mm -hmm. Like, she's just gonna be out there Megan Abundas, KSHB 41 News. With Officer Donna Drake dismissing the claim of several women missing and being murdered, the media outlets followed suit and began posting headline after headline that this whole ordeal was just a hoax. Less than two weeks later, on October 7, 2022, a 22-year-old woman showed up at a home in Excelsior Springs, Missouri, pleading for help, wearing latex lingerie and a metal collar around her neck with a padlock, saying she had been held captive by a man named Timothy since September. The woman was taken from Kansas City, held in a small room in a basement, bound, beaten, and rape. The woman managed to break free when her abductor left to take his child to school. However, there were other victims who didn't get the opportunity to escape because the abductor had already killed them. My heart is still broken. Lisa Johnson remembers Friday morning and a woman escaping from this house just up the street. She's going to be traumatized for the rest of her life. Johnson said the woman came to her door just before 8 a.m. hunched over with a collar around her neck and marks around her wrists and ankles. And I told her I'm going to call help for you. Her first response was, if you call the cops, he's going to kill both of us. This literally hit close to home. Just a few doors down, Sierra Tharp's grandmother took the woman in as they waited for police. And I hope she can get the help and get the healing she needs. The same goes for others near this house with so many questions. I just want to know she's getting the help that she needs. Everything else eventually will be told. Police say there are more details to come out in this case. We're expecting more from court documents in the coming days. On the way to the hospital, the woman was able to point out the home at 301 Old Orchard Street, where she had been held captive. As officers began learning more about the house and its owners, one man listed as a resident of the home stuck out. 39-year-old Timothy Haslett Jr. Officers sat in the area of the home waiting for the suspect to return. Less than an hour after the initial 911 call was placed, Timothy pulled up in a gray Dodge Ram pickup. Officers conducted a felony traffic stop and Timothy was taken into custody on an unrelated animal control violation. A search warrant was issued for his home and cadaver dogs were brought in to search the property. Dozens of bags of evidence were removed and are currently being examined to determine if other crimes may have occurred. So far, Timothy has been charged with first degree rape, first degree kidnapping, and second degree assault. He entered a plea of not guilty and is scheduled in court for a bond reduction hearing on Tuesday, October 18, 2022. A preliminary hearing in the case is scheduled for Friday, December 2nd, 2022. The bevy of police activity at this home on Old Orchard Road in Excelsior Springs has been replaced today by an eerie calm. The home is fenced off and boarded up as police now begin to examine all the evidence they collected here. We don't have a timeline. We know it's going to be somewhat of a lengthy investigation. Police Chief Gregory Dole says he understands the public wants to know more information, but also cautions that it might be a while before that can happen. We want to make sure that we don't do anything that would compromise the integrity or the outcome of the investigation. We want to see the justice is upheld, not only for the victim in this case, but also for this community. Uh, we believe that they deserve that, so we just want to make sure that um, we get it right. We did learn more from this probable cause statement today released in Clay County. In it, the victim, a 22-year-old woman, told police Haslett picked her up on Prospect Avenue in Kansas City in early September and held her captive in a small room in his basement where he assaulted her until she was finally able to escape last Friday when Haslett took his child to school. Police were there when he got back less than an hour later. We established the perimeter around the house very quickly and 
Sure enough, the guy came back and we were able to take him into custody without incident. On Sunday, October 16th, 2022, a candlelight vigil was held for the missing and murdered women of Kansas City. gathered out here we were looking for another person that we were looking for we went across a lot of information we're looking for one we hear about five up the streets talk for all those that's ever been out in the streets we know we get a lot more information before anybody else does yeah it's real. We know that there are still missing young ladies today. Can I get real with y'all for a second? Yes, yes sir. I'm trying to maintain my composure here. Really, yes, I am. Because I'm really pissed as hell. The reason I'm pissed is because that young lady did not have to go through this. Not only her, but any others that are missing. When you dismiss something so quick and say we have no missing people, half of us have already known from the streets, know that people are missing every day. Try to report they're missing is the problem. The opposition that you get when you report somebody missing, it's like a minefield. We have to do something better. We really do. If that young lady would not have escaped, she said her own future as she escaped. My friends did not make it out. The others did not make it. How many others were there before her? Before then, prospect. So I think seven years ago, all the way back in the forest, there was a prospect corridor show. You remember that? Yeah. Then they put a name to the face later on. Actually, they put a name to the face a year and a half later. Don't you understand that? First, they called him the Prospect Corridor But it took a year and a half as he kept operating, doing what he was doing, up and down Prospect, before they actually took it real. How many lives were lost in the process? Independence Avenue. The reason I say these two streets is because we work these areas all the time. And we know when someone comes up missing when they're not there. When's the last time that you saw a homeless camp like me? But think about it, ain't you? They're disappearing, aren't they? Anytime that society calls them undesirable, they seem to vanish. But not only do they vanish, no one goes looking. And if you go looking, they're dismissed as secondary citizens. Why should we use the resources to look for them? That's the problem. Everyone needs to be treated with dignity and respect. We must demand dignity and respect. We can no longer just go along and get along. We can no longer just keep silent. These are our babies dying in these streets, coming up missing, and nobody's saying anything. Time for being passive is over. 
There is a war on our black women. I'm going to talk to the men for a second. Turn around and look at the women beside you. It is your duty, your job, your commission is to protect them, even if it costs you your life. That is what God ordained you to do, is protect them. First, you're supposed to be a protector of those that can't protect themselves. Those that can't look out for themselves. Those that can't speak for themselves. It doesn't matter if they ridicule you. It doesn't matter if they put you down. You have a commission. I was told tonight not to come. During this process, I was told that if I keep talking, I would not be here any longer. Some folk know me from a while back, but know I got a big mouth. I'm going to keep talking. I'm keep. The Bible tells me if I lose my life for my friend, I'm gained a spot in heaven. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. Threats don't mean anything. That lets us know we're on the right path. I want you to look at patterns. Before Terry Blair, there was Cordell in Kansas City. What did he grab most people off of? Prospect and Independence Avenue. Pattern. Freedom. Look at the pattern. Bordella, Pat, Cherry Blair, Pat. This one here, I didn't know what to call him now. But we had a description of him as we were looking for another. The streets talk. Y'all need to start ringing the police phone off the hook. If they don't want to listen, call them again. Call them again. Start showing up. They cannot keep dismissing us. I don't know about you. I have grandbabies. I have granddaughters. I have daughters. I fight every day for them. Because they're not leaving Kansas City. And I don't want them to be pushed out anywhere. That's not what we're here for. There are still young ladies missing. We're going to do another big search. We did one two years ago. And there were 38 young people missing. Wow. 38. Within less than six months. 38 in six months. Out of those 38, 32 of them was African-American women. That's a problem. We were able to find 13. But there's a pattern. I want you to understand the pattern. Every time we have a good year in football or baseball, we have someone snatching kids. Because most people don't look during that time point. And they also ship them in. As commodities. We have the World Cup happening. That is why we were told that you can't talk about serial killing. It's going to mess up the tourism. You got to be quiet. I gotta forgive you. But I don't give a damn about somebody's bottom dollar. It comes to somebody's life. I, I really don't. Profits over life. Wait till it happens to one of their family members. That'll make the news. We have to do something different. I'm asking. 
I'm begging you, I'm pouring you today. Don't be silent no more. No matter what it takes, speak up, speak out. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comment section below. And I will talk to you in my next video.